Hey, Casanova, how's it going with Myrna? Lousy. I can't even get her to talk to me. And don't tell me it's my breath, because I already tried that mouthwash like you told me. Hey, Mr. Voice of Bloom, come on with me. You see, Ralph, your mouth breath might be fine, but maybe your nose breath is offending people. Nose breath? You see, nose hair stopped you so much, but a certain amount of offensive nasal breath still gets through. That's why I start off each day with Nasex Nasal Spray. One shot of Nasex, and I'm protected for the whole day. Nasex? Mind if I try some? Hey, Romeo, looks like you and Murder are grooving now. Thanks to you and Nasex. <laughs> Nasex Nasal Spray, also available at Roll-On. <laughs> of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Rick Moranis. Dave Thomas. Featuring Robin Duke and Tony Rosato. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. Elvis, the most dynamic entertainer of this century. His charm, magnetism, and self-confidence touched his fans all over the world. And now the essence of this very unique man is captured for you to enjoy in The Magic of Elvis. Artist and poet Betty Harper is known worldwide for her work, but Elvis fans know her as the Elvis Illustrator. This beautiful 80-page collector's book is the finest example of her fantastic Elvis portraits. Each one shows a different side of his personality and brings back memories of times when he touched your life. The Magic of Elvis will be your most prized Elvis memento. And here's how to order your Elvis keepsake. Use your credit card. Call toll-free 1-800-346-8800. That's 1-800-346-8800. Or save COD. Send $14.95 plus $3 postage and handling to Elvis, P.O. Box 24539, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. Remember, call 1-800-346-8800. That's 1-800-346-8800. After this joyride, I'm out of the crash dummy business for good. But Vince, it's a great job. Heck, they'd have to pry me away from it. Anybody home? Larry, they do pry you away from it. Oh, yeah. For years, I've been eating steering wheels. For what? To prove how safety belts save lives. But thousands die every year in car accidents because they don't buckle up. Vince, we're dummies. We don't wear safety belts. Larry, you really know how to hurt a guy. Hit it! Yeah! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. December 1978, with Americans held hostage in the grip of terror, one man dares a heroic rescue. Hello, I'm Mary Hart. Entertainment Tonight takes you behind the scenes of the miniseries on Wings of Eagles with star Richard Crenna. This is a real story. I think people don't know this is a real story. Then, join funny man Steve Allen for TV's Funniest Moments Part 2. Plus, an exclusive preview of Rosanna Arquette's new movie, only on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, Tuesday at 5 on TV 12. Sunrise Semester presents Edith Prickley and Disasters in the Home. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disasters in the Home. Today, we're going to show you what to do when you run into one of those little household fires. And demonstrating with me today is a neighbor of mine. I've asked her to join me. She's a hell of a gal. She's never been on television before. And I'd like you to welcome her, Miss Wendy Longsborough. <gasps> Hello, Wendy. Hi. You nervous, dear? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> well, just loosen up, honey. This is your big chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell everybody what you do at home. Well, I'm a housewife and I decorate cakes part-time. What the hell are you looking at, Wendy? They're not going to get any bigger. <laughs> Good gracious, dear. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had a fire in the home? Yes. Did you know how to handle it? No, I didn't. I bet you didn't, Wendy, and that's why you're here, so we can both learn how. All right, Wendy, could you hand me the wastebasket, please? This one here? You see another one, dear? <laughs> you can put it down, sweetie. 
Good Lord, dear, you've been baking brownies too long. <laughs> I should ask, what are you putting them? <laughs> all right, honey, listen. You smoke, don't you? Yes, you know. I do. Yeah, all right. I don't mean the killer weed. <laughs> all right. Has this ever happened to you, Wendy? You have an ashtray full of butts, right? You empty them in the waste paper basket. There you go, little house cleaning. You go away, you answer the phone. And an hour later, you come back, and there's a raging campfire going. <laughs> Good Lord, we haven't got all day. <laughs> Butch. Thanks, dear. <laughs> He's a cute one, isn't he? There we go. What the hell's happening there? <laughs> come on, baby. Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> what do you think, Wendy? Uh, I think that's got it. You sure? Yeah, All yes, right. I think that's okay. There we go. There you go, Butch. <laughs> Anybody got a wiener they can spare? <laughs> <laughs> All right, rule number one, folks, don't panic. That's the trouble with most people. There it goes, there it goes. <laughs> they find themselves in a situation like this and they lose control. <laughs> uh, don't you think we ought to do something, Edith? Of course, we're going to do something. Yep. Is it hot in here? Am I going through my chain? <laughs> Edith, I think we should do something. We're going to do something, but first I'm going to tell Coach Cheese I won't be home for dinner. <laughs> I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Whoa! You knocked it over. Didn't I, dear? Edith is now, getting out of control. Are you sure? It's an inferno. It's an inferno. It is an inferno. And a pretty small one at that. Whoa, it's spreading, though. It's spreading. Yes, it is. Oh, it's an inferno. All right, I don't lose control. That's you grab the fire extinguisher. We'll see you later. Well, that's one way to handle a fire. Call the fire department. You know, we're just about out of time right now. But next week, we're going to be bringing in a real disaster. My hobby. <laughs> Until then, if you run into Smokey the Bear, tell him I'm out. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Lord. That was quite a fire. Fire? <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Cookery Croc. And here's your host, Angus Croc. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, too, and welcome to Cookery Croc. Now, most of you know me as Angus Croc, the famous blues singer. Here's a couple of my albums right here. Edinburgh Man, sold over 2,000 copies in Scotland alone. And, of course, Blues from the Highland, a classic in its own time. Sold more copies with that album than Slim Whitman ever sold. But on Cookery Croc, you're going to be getting a chance to see Angus Croc, the gourmet chef, huh? What a... Ah! on. Anyway, we're going to be working on meals that you can prepare in your own home for next to nothing. Like this lovely casserole here that I showed you yesterday. A beautiful meal that will let you feed a family of four for only 98 cents. But before I go a step further, I'd like to bring out today's special guest, Gregory Peck as Dr. Joseph Mengele from the movie The Boys from Brazil. Gregory Peck. Well, Greg, or Dr. Mengele, I guess I should say, it's a great pleasure to have you here on the show. But casserole is brown. Well, this one here. Yes. Ah, I know, I know. I, I, I cooked it yesterday. I prefer it would be blue. You could put some blueberries in it or something. That eh? won't be necessary. I'll take care of it myself. Ooh, good grief. <laughs> what are you doing there? There. That's better, isn't it? Huh. Isn't it? <laughs> something <laughs> different, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him. What? Just it. Oh. <laughs> ah, you're quite a joker. Yeah. The dogs. What? The dogs? <laughs> Boy, I don't know who invited those dogs on this show. It suddenly wasn't me. Anyway, Dr. Joseph Mengele, ladies and gentlemen. I was hoping he'd stay a wee bit longer, but, oh, well, on with the show, eh? Now, oh, today we're going to be showing you how to cook scones. Not the kind you get in lousy restaurants either. I took the liberty of going out and getting some crappy ones to show you. Look, see it. Look this is not good food. Take a wee bite and... <laughs> it's like crap. Anyway, 
that's not the kind. We're going to be making the real homemade scones that will melt in your mouth. Now, I'm going to need someone from the audience to help me out. A wee bit of assistance, eh? How about, um... Oh, how about you, dear? Hmm? Hey. No, not the fat lady. The wee cute thing beside her. What, is she a daughter or something? Yeah, you come... Yeah, come right up here. Ah, so good to have you on the show. What's your name? Laurie Anderson. Laurie Anderson. Isn't she a wee bonny thing, huh? Hey, I must say. Now, how old would you be, Laurie? Oh, I'm 15. 15? Just my age. <laughs> I'm 15 myself. <laughs> Just kidding, you know. Hey, well, okay, now, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing, Laurie, and I want to show you so you can help me, we'll get rid of this mingle casserole here, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be kneading this dough. So we'll just split it up into two parts here. You take your part. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Eh? <laughs> just need a wee bit of that dough. <laughs> okay, now, what we're going to be doing is, you're going to be making scones with raisins, and I'm going to be making them without. What you might do is give your uh, guests a wee bit of a choice there. Uh, you, how's that? Is it? Have you got it there? You, is it fun. Yeah? Is it fun? <laughs> Now, here's what you do, you cute wee thing. You're a doll, you know that? I like to have good guests on my show. Just take a few of these wee raisins like that and poke them in. Take a wee bit like this. This is going to be your scone. And poke some raisins in there. As I was saying, I like to give my guests a choice. I have a friend who likes scones, but he hates raisins. So I make them both ways, with raisins and without. You having fun yet? <laughs> okay. Well, you put too many raisins in there. Now, that's going to make them sick. Take some of those out. Yeah, just a few of them out. Yeah, and put the rest in. Hey, see, you got a big... Now, there's a big hole there. Oh, yeah, poke that right in the hole. Isn't that good, eh? <laughs> all right. Okay, um, we got to get moving along here, so... Uh, all right, off with you. Okay, now, um, we'll just put these in a pan. Like that, we've got two with and without. Here's one here, we'll put a couple more raisins in that, like that. Ha! <laughs> and... The final touch, I love to add just an ounce of scotch to the scones before placing them in the oven. It adds a certain flavor. So we'll go over here to the old bottle, eh? Huh? <laughs> and uh, we'll just add one ounce. Gee, my hands are all slippery from that <laughs> damn cloud. Can't get the top off. <laughs> oh, here we are. I should be doing my exercises, eh? <laughs> Okay, we're going to add just an ounce now. No more, no less. Oh, put in a wee bit too much. Now I'll just drain that off. <laughs> oh, I drank too much. It's going to be one ounce exactly. Now we'll take a wee bit more. There we are. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I'll put too much in again. All right. <laughs> ah, well, well, things low again. I'll tell you what, I'll just have to make it. Mm. And uh, there we go. Now, see, overfilled it again. So this time I'll just save a wee bit in the bottom. Okay, one good ounce of scotch, eh? Mm. Mm. And an ounce for the chef. I always say, when you're going to make scones, you might as well be happy, huh? So, mm. take an ounce for myself. And uh, you take this and uh, you, you just put it in the oven, you know? Did I put scotch in this or not? There we go. That's good and some for me. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, okay, so I'll put it in the oven. Take about ten minutes before and um, and while they're cooking, uh, perhaps we should bring out my fellows here that are in my blues band and uh, do a wee bit of a blues song for you, eh? On my far right and heart, Gordon Sunny Boy McPherson. <laughs> and the cute young lad on guitar is none other than Lightning Sam McGregor. <laughs> oh, that's really bad, eh? <laughs> well, I hope my pipes are in good shape today, boys. One, two, three, four! <laughs> I cranked up my box hall. It's a mean machine. I'm out now. Okay. Down 
to Edinburgh town. Gonna walk around the streets and have myself a real ball. <laughs> Got five guineas in my pocket. And I hope some lassie don't let me down. <laughs> Oh, the scones! Scones are burning! Oh my... <laughs> well, that doesn't... But the bloody scones! Well, let that be a lesson to you. When you're singing the Scottish blues and the scones are baking, don't get carried away or they'll get burned to a crisp like these ones did. Perhaps I'll write a tune about it one day, I don't know. Anyway, we've run out of time, so... Until next week, this is Angus Crock saying, Bob's your uncle. Goodbye and good riddance to you. Fast talking Scottish blues. Give me one, give me two, give me three, give me five pound notes. Give me six, give me ten, give me twenty. Twenty, Bob. Great, twenty, Bob, and a hot job. Tonight on SCTV, Quincy Cartoon Corner, with special guest, Tweety Bird. Palm Beach Festival, April 7th through May 16th. The finest in dance, music, and theater. Phone for a brochure, 686-6800. Stop. Do you have trouble finding the studs in your walls? Has this ever happened to you? Or this? Now you can locate studs, electrical wiring, and plumbing accurately every time with the Sunax MD-12. No more guesswork, no more mistakes. Simply move Sunax along the wall. A steady red light identifies stud work, and a flashing red light alerts you to electrical wiring. Sunax is powerful enough to locate metal and electric through up to six inches of concrete. Avoid the danger of poorly installed wall hangings. Sunax locates hidden studs with ease and traces electrical wiring like magic operates on a nine volt battery accurate every time lightweight easy to handle the stud finder is the perfect gift for the home handyman install shelves pictures hanging plants or whatever you desire quickly and easily with the sunax md12 perfect every time use your credit card for rush delivery by calling 1-800-336-3030 or send check or money order for 1995 plus 295 shipping and handling to stud finder p.o box 8325 west palm beach florida Children with cystic fibrosis want to grow up. More than half of them are now living into their 20s, but that's not long enough. It attacks a child's lungs, and there is no cure so far. But today, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is supporting the research that can soon end this disease. The money you give goes immediately to help find a cure. Give a child a chance to grow up. Accept the challenge and support the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. For over 100 years, the YMCA has been teaching people to swim, and we think we're the best. From mom to tot to preschool, grade school, and adults, the Y features all types of water sports, from aqua aerobics to scuba. When it comes to water, the YMCA is for everybody to learn how to swim people. Okay. Do it. Me? No, do the, do the song. Oh, jeez. Good day. Good one, eh? You didn't expect that, eh? He's loaded. Okay. Good change, right? Good day. Welcome to the Great White North Canadian Quarter. I'm Bob McKenzie. It's my brother, Doug. We've How's got, it going, eh? we got a real big show. Because yeah. This week's... we got. So a, hurry out, eh? At home. We, watch quick. we got a topic, but it's like really more than one topic because it's, it's on stuff that really bugs us, right? And but like more than one stuff bugs us, so yeah. it's really more than one topic. Anyway, we I made a list here. What really bugs me is people that honk at you when you stop to look at an accident. Right? Yeah, it, that bugs me too. Okay. Even if I'm not driving, like. And the thing is, that if if you look in your rearview mirror, eh, someone will be honking at them because they'll stop right after you. Eh? <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, another thing that bugs me is uh, when, well, when we go to uh, uh, Canadian Tire, yeah. um, like the lineup at the express counter is always uh, longer than at the other um, counters, right? And so if it's an express counter, right, why is the lineup longer? Yeah, and like, okay, so if you got eight items or less, eh, so how come a, a six pack of pop or something co co counts as one item? Right, it should be six, right? Yeah, okay. And, and then, like, if you're in the line and you got eight items, perfect number, eh? And you pick up a TV guide, they'll boot you out of the line, eh? And send you to another line. Sure enough, it got longer with a bunch of fat ladies with their groceries, eh? Well, 
I don't know about that. Anyway, um, so those are some of the things that bug us. Damn, we forgot, <laughs> you forgot to tell them about other stuff, eh, that we get at CTC, Canadian Tire, eh? Like, we are going there one time to get a pail. Like, Hurry up. Just an ordinary pail, like, to wash our feet, eh? <laughs> we're out of time. It. What? We're out of time. So, good day. Coming to SCTV. Sissy musician, bum! A compelling film with Eugene Fedor and Joan Crawford. Nice fingers, Mr. Beret. But what else can they do? <laughs> and now you come traipsing in here with your high society fashions and your big shoulders. Well, we both know I'm no good for your son, but I can't help myself. New York Rhapsody, coming soon. <laughs> Ah, another drug overdose. Looks like it. When will these ducks ever learn? <laughs> All right, Sam, get him out of here. All right, Quiz. Come on, boy. Got another one, Quiz. Ah, jeez! Yeah, Sylvester's his name. Cause of death? Natural causes. Natural causes? You've got to be kidding! Look! He's over 10 feet long and he's flatter than a pancake! Somebody's kidding somebody! Sam! Prepare for an autopsy! Oh, Quince, it's all in the report. Leave it alone, huh? Well, look! I don't buy that report! I got a hunch there's more to this case than meets the eye and I'm gonna prove it! Scalpel. Thanks, Sam. Just as I thought. Extreme compression on the tissue and on a bone structure. He was run over by a bulldozer. I guess that's right. Ah, not quite, Sam. Still doesn't explain everything. That's uh, the wood marks, all those powder burns, all the slice marks, the adhesions. Just doesn't make sense. Why don't you leave it alone, Quince? We're backlogged with cases as it is. Boss, I got a hunch. A hunch that that cat did not die by the weight of that bulldozer alone. Now I need 24 hours to prove my point. And if you're going to sit back on your duff, I'm going to go out and do it myself. All right, Quince. You got your 24 hours. But that's it. Boss, I could kiss you. Oh. Tweety, you're not leveling with me. I swear, I swear. All I did was put a firecracker in the pretty cat's ear and run away right into the dog's mouth. The dog's mouth? Wait, now all I got to do is talk to Spike? And there's a whole ball of wax! I'm not coming out. You don't have to come out, Spike. Just level with me. Okay. All I did was chase after him as fast as I could, and then I bit off his tail. Uh, yeah, yeah? This, of course, tore the fur completely off his body, leaving him naked except for some stubble. Uh, come on, Spike. It's got to be more than that. No, no. That's all that happened. I swear it. Oh. Then he ran over to the bread factory over there. Of course, the bread factory! Ah, oh, Spike, I can kiss you! You got proof, Quincy, let's hear it. Proof? I'll give you all the proof you need. Here's what happened. Now look, Sylvester was chasing Tweety down the street. He trapped him right at the bottom of a tree. A Tweety went right up the tree. And Sylvester went right up after him. He got him out on a branch. He took out on the branch right after him. And then the branch let loose. Sylvester went straight down. And then the branch ran right on top of his head. It just landed right on top of his head. All the splinters went in his head. And that's how I got those splinters. But right after that, Tweety went up to him and he stuck some dynamite right in his ear. He took about four pieces of dynamite. Boom! He blew him into 27 pieces. So he had to be stitched up. But that didn't kill him yet either. And what happened after that was, he started chasing Tweety. And he chased Tweety right into Spike's mouth. He ran in Spike's mouth. And Spike was in there. He was running inside of his mouth. He chased Tweety right outside. And then Spike saw him. And he grabbed his tail with his teeth. He bit down like that. He started swinging him around and around and around. And he started fighting like that. You can see stars and a big cloud of dust. And now all of the fur came off of him. He lost all of his fur. So Mr. lost every bit of fur and he was bald. He was running around bald. But that didn't do him yet. So after that, Spike saw him. He chased him right down the street into a bread factory. He chased him into a bread factory. And then he went for him and he missed him. So Mr. jumped up and he landed in one of those conveyor belts. And it sliced him up like bread. 20 slices. Just like that. 20 clean slices. And then it put a cellophane over him. He came out looking like a loaf of bread. But that didn't kill him yet either. So then they put him on a delivery truck. And they delivered him. Where to? Right to Spike's house. They took him to Spike's house. Spike opened up the door. He went, ah. 
He saw some metrics are chasing him. He chased him all the way up to a cliff. And he went after him and then his fight stopped. Sylvester kept going. He went out about 20 feet like this. He's running straight like that. He looks down. He sees he's up in midair. He's got about 900 feet to go. He goes straight down, lands on a highway. A steamroller's coming along, spreads right over him and slides him out like a pancake. <laughs> and that's what did him in. Except for one thing. I've seen cats go through a lot more than that in movies. <laughs> and they're, they're never killed. Young cats like Sylvester. Young? Sylvester was 97 years old. 97 years old? Then he did die of natural cause. <laughs> Jeez! Special delivery for Mr. Quincy. Thanks, I... My name is Jimmy Weatherspoon. I am Vice Mayor of the City of Delray Beach. April is National Fair Housing Month and Fair Housing Month in Palm Beach County. The Board of County Commissioners encourages each of you to support fair housing. I support it. It's right, it's fair, it's for everyone. Thank you. On the next Hour Magazine. And thanks to all the letters that people wrote in, I got my job back. Really? Woman of the Hour, Lauren Tweez, tells Gary Collins about her return to the love boat and how friends helped her overcome cocaine addiction. This just can't go on. You can't have a working or personal relationship if you're going to be a mess like that. Plus, Dr. Rosenfeld's Guide to Prevention and the very first Baby Boomer on Hour Magazine. Tuesday at 9 on TV 12. Lighthouse Gallery proudly presents the 6th Annual Photographic Society of America International Photo Salon. See the outstanding display of pictorial, nature, and monochrome prints submitted by photo artists from around the world for judging in this renowned competition co-sponsored by Laser Color Laboratories. See and enjoy photography as an art form. Now through April 30th at Lighthouse Gallery in Tequesta. Open Sundays for this exhibit. Somewhere in this lab, there is hope. Hope for a cure. A cure for millions of men, women, and children who suffer the pain of arthritis. But one element is missing. Money. Money to continue the hope. Only you have that key ingredient. Become an active partner in the search for a cure. Please give generously to the Arthritis Foundation. It's time we took arthritis seriously. Card today. Send twenty dollars to the Arthritis Foundation or call eight three two six one zero three. Here comes the sun. Volunteers are needed for Sunfest 86 Michelob, May 1st through 4th. Call today, 627-9095. I guess you could say I had everything. I had a good job, beautiful house. I had a wonderful wife and two great kids. I also had a cocaine habit. First, a cocktail weekdays at 10.30 on TV 12.